What about like lighting? Is there other interesting? Well, the funny answer is like we know the laws of physics. So it's actually really easy to do everything in computer graphics. Yeah. But uh, the direct solution of the laws of physics is immensely slow. And so what we're finding are approximations rather than complete solutions. Because um, you need something that's a million times faster than the brute force answer. We should say that the the physics of the seed is you just take a bunch of photons and bounce them around. That's how light works. Yeah. That's going to be very inefficient because there's <laughs> there's a lot of bouncing and a lot of photons. Yeah. Yeah. Photon tracing is the subject matter that does brute force calculation of pixels on a screen from all of the light in the scene. And it it works and it's correct and it just is an implementation of the laws of physics and it's millions or billions of times slower than what we do. But Carmack had figured out uh, how to do uh, really cool lighting algorithms, including real-time lighting with objects moving around. Um, and uh, I hadn't taken it very far. So I, with Unreal Engine, I'd, I'd realized like, it's, we don't have nearly enough computing performance on our CPU to compute the light of every pixel on the screen from all of the light sources that affect it. Um, yeah, we were at a six cycle texture mapper and we couldn't afford 30 more cycles for lighting. And so the answer had to be some approximation. And uh, the one that uh, Carmack had picked up on in the Quake engine was light mapping. That if we, uh, instead of calculating all the lighting on every pixel, what if we like, made a big texture that we placed over all of the walls in the scene that was like wallpaper? And what if we say every foot, we're going to compute a lighting value for just that one one foot grid on the object rather than computing it everywhere. Um, and then if we, well, if we just linear interpolate that over the course of it, it you know, you get a lighting and, uh, solution that actually works pretty well um, and is fast enough to work. And so a lot of Unreal Engine's lighting techniques were based on light mapping. We introduced colored lighting. Um, you know, so you could have colored light sources. Then we realized, oh, since we're doing this and we're doing it on light maps, we can actually do some pretty expensive calculations, hundreds of cycles, since we're only calculating it for every one foot of world space rather than every pixel. And so we introduced a whole bunch of elaborate lighting effects, um, like torch flickering um, and you know the caustic effects of water bouncing off of a surface uh, and so on, um, so, and like pulsing lights and blinking lights and everything else, and created a system. I created a system for compositing them together. So if you had an arbitrary number of light sources, they could all do that. And oh, nice. then, you know, then I, I implemented a shadowing algorithm. You know, if you cast a ray from a point on a light, from a light to a point on a surface and see if whether it intersects any other geometry. If it doesn't intersect, then the light hits the object. Uh, and if it does intersect, then the light hits something else first. And the, that pixel on the object should be dark. Um, uh, so I, I built a real-time real version of this, and it ran at about a half a frame a second. <laughs> so I was running around at half a frame a second, like shooting out light projectiles and looking at dynamic lighting. And it's like, someday computers will be fast enough for this, but um, not today. So I made a non-real-time version that pre-calculates all the lighting and realized, oh, wait, if you've pre-calculated the shadowing in an object, you can still apply the lighting dynamically as long as the light's not moving. So you could do torch flickering with shadows. Mm -hmm. And you know, I figured out all the cases of dynamic and static lighting that were actually practical on a computer at the time and exposed them to artists. And this was the wonderful thing. I was just like, ty typing in these little features, uh, exposing them to artists. And every day, they'd find like a drop down with some more lighting options available to them. And they'd start using them, and they'd do things that I never thought possible. Mm -hmm. And th this was always the coolest thing. As a programmer building an engine, you you might think you know the implications of the feature you're building, but artists are so clever that you always find that you've built the capability of doing vastly more than you ever anticipated as they start to use combinations of features together in concert to do ever more amazing things. That's the genius of artists, is they're given constraints, and within those constraints, they create something you could have never possibly imagined given the constraints. That's yeah. this is such a beautiful coupling between engineering and artistry and art. That's right. And it's timeless. You know, what, what did the Renaissance painters do with paints? And what do what do the early game artists do with uh, early engines? You know, everybody's figuring out the capabilities of their medium. And you're seeing a revolution.